Hi, I'm Dr. Jim Hoven of Ramos Law and your host for Health Matters. Today, I wanna to share a little bit of information about trauma and recovering from trauma. So if you've been in a traumatic event or if you know someone who has, stay tuned. We're gonna talk about that next on Health Matters. If you've ever undergone a trauma that you considered as a major piece of your life, I think you can resonate with me when I say it can really affect you down the road. In fact, you can sometimes think about that situation that happened weeks, months, or even years ago, and it can literally affect your physiology. It can make you feel teared up, or it can make you feel excited or anxious. And what I wanna talk about today is a little bit of information on how the body is processing this trauma and what steps we can take, albeit, this should be known, this is not gonna be medical advice that I give you today. It's gonna to be far more about awareness and education so that if you are feeling some of the aspects of trauma impact or post-traumatic stress disorder, this is not something we're gonna solve on our video, but rather it might awaken you to say, I need to go talk to someone, get some professional help, and someone who can help walk me through the two stages of trauma, um, trauma treatment that I'm gonna share with you today. And by the way, I got this information from one of my newest sources of all things on science-based health, and his name is Dr. Andrew Huberman. He runs a podcast called The Huberman Lab. This guy is brilliant. He actually is a, a, a PhD professor at an Ivy League college, and he does, um, it's at Stanford, and he talks about neurobiology and uh, optometry. So he's a brain-based science guy. So that's where his study is, is all on the brain and how the neurology of what's going on inside our body affects how the outside of our body works. So coming back to trauma, there's a couple different types of trauma that we have to, to talk about today. One is a single incident that's created a major impact on our brains. So for example, let's say that you were in a horrific car accident, rollover car accident, all kinds of issues happen on the scene. That one event can affect you and can affect me long term. It can make us say, I never want to drive again. It can be that bad. Like because of that one incident, I never want to drive again. The other kind of trauma is that more insidious type of, of mental stress trauma of something that we saw happening over and over and over just a little bit at a time. And because of that chronic stimulation of that, we say, man, I, I, I just can't deal with that anymore. It'd be for example, like let's say you wanted to um, fly out to this certain city and every time you went to fly to that city, your plane was delayed or there was weather there and the next time uh, you saw a crime committed on the street, you saw little things over and over again, you might say, you know what? I never want to go to that city. I just don't want to be part of it. And so that was a cumulative trauma versus a single event. Either way, that creates neurological impacts in our minds, in our brains that cause us to have fear. And fear is really, um, it's not conducive to healing. So if we want to really battle this tiger of fear in our lives, if we want to overcome that, there's, according to Dr. Huberman, two primary steps that we need to take whether it's from a single incident or from a, an, an ongoing traumatic stimulus, just a mild ongoing stimulus. And so here's the first step. The first step is how we look at the story of what happened. So let's go back to the major thing first. If we look at the, the car accident, the horrible car accident, the first time we tell that story, it's gonna be just like we were reliving it. All the same emotional angst is gonna come up. Even our physiology is gonna react the same. We might start sweating, we might start crying, our pupils dilate. All the things that we talked about on another video on mental stress and how it affects the body, this applies here. But what research has found is that under the right circumstances, by either telling that story again and again and again and again, each time looking to make it not as emotional, but far more just like, what a bad story. It's just a bad story. If we can take that, make that jump from emotional, heart-wrecking um, situation to this is just a really bad story, it, it deconditions the emotional side and then it dampens the fear level and then it doesn't create the havoc on our immune system, our nervous system that it did on first blush. So literally talking it through. But again, this is where we need professional help. And it, it can also be done in a written format as well. 
So making sure you understand that, first thing is to, they call it extinguishing the issue. So instead of being a big open forest fire, we keep extinguishing the power that that has so that now it's just nothing more than like, man, what a bad story. It's, it's not any good. Now the second part of that is a reconditioning that story or updating it to where now we insert a new positive message. So this would be akin to, the, the, my interpretation of it is like finding the gratitude within the imperfection. So the imperfection is this thing that happens. So now we've extinguished it, we've dulled it down. We didn't, we didn't say it didn't mean anything, but over time we've realized, hey, it's just a set of facts and you know that's what that is. We've taken the emotion. Now imagine if we could insert the positive things about that thing. Well, because of that car crash, I really learned about what it's like to drive on ice in a different way. And I, it made me far more alert on the road. And I bought a car that was really about safety. And I really make sure that my kids are always belted. Whatever it is, once we have extinguished it, then we put the positive reinforcement on how that thing has best served us. The research shows that that's the way to tame the fear. Because we're, we're not going to have fear without anxiety, fear without stress, but we can have anxiety and stress without fear. And again, if we can quell the fear, if we can make that minimal, then we're also going to make sure that our healing happens faster. So I know there's a lot to unpack there. And in this short video, we don't have time to do it. But if you want to check this out, you can look at the Andrew Huberman podcast from the second week of December. And you'll see that there. that's the, the podcast that he released that week. And you can listen to the details. It's a fantastic bit of information. And, you know, we all have fear. And so it's just how do we tame it? How do we deal with it? So hopefully that helps you in your healing. And remember, any of this that you have questions about, you can email me, Dr. Jim Hoven at jim at ramoslaw.com. So jim at ramoslaw.com is my email and we can talk about it more. Also, if this was interesting to you, please share it. Please send it to someone, uh, someone who needs it or someone you love. Love to get the message out. Subscribe to our channels. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And remember, today and every day, your health matters.